Hi, everybody. We are coming to you live from Jackson, Mississippi, and beautiful sunny California where it is not raining. The Margie looks flawless, like always. No. I'm so excited about today's speaker, mostly because I just love her with oh, all of thank my you. heart. She's pretty amazing. Like, thank you. Super chiropractor, super mom, super speaker. She's just awesome. Um, thank you. For those of you who may not have heard her speak in Parker, Vegas, or at many other events around the country, um, she is a practicing chiropractor and a busy mom of three amazing and beautiful and talented little girls. Thank you. Um, she lives in beautiful uh, California, but... She is from the amazing Chicago, which she likes to frequent a lot. Like I joke with her all the time that like when you, you're going to buy your like other home there. Yeah. Um, so she, like I said, she's currently in practice. Um, she has an amazing background in business development where she has helped other companies, which she'll talk about a little more in growing their businesses. So she knows what she's talking about, but she also believes in the work life balance. And I can honestly say she has helped keep me grounded um, because sometimes I get away with myself a little bit too much. So um, she is a graduate of one of my favorite colleges of all time, the Logan Chiropractic College. Um, and for those of you who didn't graduate from Logan, I know your colleges were amazing. I just happened to have been to Logan like a dozen times and they let me play with stuff that I probably shouldn't be allowed to touch. <laughs> we won't tell anybody. <laughs> but on a high note, other colleges have reached out to me and asked me to come play with stuff at their college campuses too, in hopes of making them my favorite college campus in the future. So you never know what will happen. But anyway, so I'm going to turn it over to Margie because like I said, she's amazing. She's dynamic. She's just the most genuine, wonderful person, which isn't always conveyed in a webinar, but y'all, whatever you see here, like amp that up times 10, that is her in real life. And she's awesome. So the Dr. Margie Smith, Oh my gosh, Christy, thank you so much. You are literally going to make me cry with that introduction. So thank you so, so, so very much. Um, I am beyond excited to be here today and want to first and foremost take um, the time to say thank you to everybody. I appreciate you taking out the time. I appreciate you being on the webinar with us. Um, and I know that we all have really busy schedules. We're all so super crazy, um, but I really appreciate it. And I hope that um, from the webinar today, I hope that you learn something new. Of course, that's why we're all here. I hope that you have a few laughs because that's also what I like to impose in some of the times that I speak. Um, and I hope that you, I inspire you, whether it's something that you may do in your practice, change in your practice or do or change in your life. Um, I hope that I leave you with something that helps inspire you, inspires you, motivates you. And just know at the end of the day, um, I'm here for you. If you have any questions or if you have any need for support, um, I'm your girl and I'm here to help as well. So what I'm going to do is turn this screen share on and I'm hoping that this all smoothly works and we are going to roll into the material and start presenting. So you all saw the webinar topic. It talked about how I work less than 10 hours a week in my SCEP practice and how I have a wonderful life and a fulfilling life and a great, um, a great time in practice and in life. So what I'm going to talk about is what it is I do and how I have this practice that is a low overhead, high profit and stress-free experience in practice. Um, and it's what I have found over the last about four years that I refer to as a micro practice. Now it's a newer concept. It's not something that I really ever have heard anybody talk about in chiropractic. And it was something that I just felt so excited about that I thought, boy, why not try bundling this together and presenting this in a way for other chiropractors to learn? Um, Cause ultimately what I've found over the last couple of years is when chiropractors have heard what kind of a practice I'm running and how I'm doing things, instantly they keep saying, how do I learn more? I want to do that. That sounds great. So that's what we're going to dive into today. Um, what I want to talk about first is who I have found in my experience would benefit from what I'm calling a micro practice. So what I found is if you are struggling in practice, if you've been in practice a handful of years, five years, 10 years, a veteran for a couple of decades, 
this could be a good fit for you. This could be something that could be a good concept for you to look into trying to do. If you are an associate looking to start your own practice, how are you going to do that? You know, the gap between um, associateship and practice ownership, that's a really big jump. And sometimes the support that we have within our profession isn't the right fit for every single person. Listen, what I'm running in my own practice is on a smaller scale. It's a simpler scale. It's so much more less stress. It's so much easier because that's what I have found fits really well for me and my life and my practice. There are chiropractors out there who have mega practices and that's what they, they want to do and that what fits really well for them. Ultimately, what I am proposing is a model and a style of practice that is something that could fit for every style of practice, but it's just kind of starting on a much smaller scale versus having to go so big so fast right away. So are you better than an associateship? I say this and I think that we can say this if we really feel this way. Not to say that an associateship is bad. I don't mean that at all that way. But when I was a student at Logan, I shadowed over 20 different offices during my time at Logan. By the time I left Logan, I felt the confidence to open my first practice. I didn't feel that I was needing an associateship or wanting an associateship. So I went into practice ownership right away out of college. And so I feel like that that is a possibility for a lot of students coming out of college. But on the scale that we see some chiropractic offices, it's, it's not always possible, especially today with student loan debts and not being able to get business loans, et cetera. Go, getting into practice right out of school can be very daunting. So is an associateship something that you wanna skip altogether? If so, a micro practice could be good for you. Are you stressed in practice? Meaning like, are you just sick of wearing all these hats like she is and having to do every single tiny little thing, even if you have a staff? A lot of times us in practice still feel like, man, I'm still doing everything, even though I have this staff that's supposed to help me with all these things. I found in my experience that this micro practice model has really made that stress level go significantly down um, versus the, the practices I've had in the past. Or do you happen to be like me? Are you a parent and a chiropractor? Are you a mom? Are you a dad? And do you have children that you have to manage and juggle in addition to doing the work as a chiropractor? So this is who I am. I'm Dr. Margie Smith. That's me in the middle there attempting to do an adjustment while I have all of my children crawling around all over me. And so that's who I am today. But here's where I've gotten to this point. And here's kind of where my story starts and where I have what I think is some really great, interesting experience to be able to now share this model and this concept with you and kind of where my career all started. So I graduated from Logan in 2004, and my husband and I at the time were living in Chicago, in downtown Chicago. So I opened my first practice shortly after graduation and had a wonderful, beautiful practice. This is a picture of what my office looked like. It was a cute little practice. It was about 800 square feet, um, but it was a full-time practice. I was there from about seven to seven most days. Um, during the week, even sometimes on Saturdays. Um, I had a staff, I had two staff people. So there was a lot to manage. There was a lot to juggle. Um, it was a wonderful practice. I had a great experience and I didn't have any kids at the time in my life. So I was all about the hustle and building that practice and growing that practice. That practice as well at that time was mainly an insurance dependent practice. So most of my office collections, the growth of my practice was mainly based on the checks that I was getting from insurance. And I was in every network that I can get myself into at that time as well. So a couple of years into this practice, my husband and I decide that we want to move to California. So we, I, sell, I sold the practice, we packed up a truck, and we moved to beautiful San Diego. Now in San Diego, I worked and did a little bit of coverage work and some consulting work for some other chiropractors. But then shortly after that, I opened my own practice. And um, But I opened a practice more as an independent contractor with another chiropractor there by the name of Dr. Matt Hubbard. And Dr. Hubbard and I worked really well together. I opened a satellite office of one of his um, clinics. And so we had this great experience with this great working relationship together. And here I go again, building another practice and kind of getting that off the ground. 
But then about a year after that happened, I became pregnant with my first daughter. And of course it was an expected thing and we were wanting to start a family, but then I found myself in a place where it was just becoming a struggle to juggle this practice and then my um, newborn and how I was gonna make all this work. So at that time, I decided to sell that pra practice base to the owner and was gonna stay home. And I stayed home with my daughter for about, maybe about eight months before I thought, oh boy, I need to go do something else. So I took a little break from actual practice and I found a wonderful opportunity working for a company called Cash Practice, which many of you may know in the profession. It's an amazing practice. It's an amazing software solution for your practice. And I had the pleasure and joy to work with Dr. Miles Bodzin and Holly Jensen and the team for um, eight and a half amazing years. And so during that time, I had this great experience of getting to know the business development aspect of helping other offices and helping practices do very well and was still able to stay connected in chiropractic. But then life took us to Northern California, which is where we are living right now. So this is a picture of some um, vineyards um, in, in not far from where we live. We live just outside of Sacramento, which um, is about maybe about an hour or 15 minutes away from Napa Valley. So we moved to Northern California about, about five years ago. And um, a little after I moved here, I started to feel a little bit of a demand to open an office. But I thought at the time, boy, if I'm going to do this again, I really need to do this on my own terms and really what my family needs of me and not necessarily what chiropractic expects of me or what is the normal or what is the standard chiropractic office. So I ended up coming to um, some local chiropractors in the area of where I live and I found a room to rent. And I decided that I was gonna rent this room from, from the chiropractor, that was my relationship with them. And then everything else was very separate. My own business, I have my own business license, obviously, my own corporation, all my collections and everything that I do is now on my own. And now in the practice that I'm running, I have, I'm a completely cash-based practice versus my first practice was insurance-based. My second practice was like a little 50-50 split and now I'm all a cash-based practice. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means as well. Ultimately, I built this practice around who needs me most in my life. And that's these people right here. My husband, Lauren, he and I have been married for 15 years and are three amazingly beautiful daughters. These little girls are the joy of our life. Um, our daughters are 10, five and seven years old. And so they're very busy, they're very active and they've got a lot going on. And because my husband does travel so much for work, I really needed to have a situation set up for my work that was going to let me work and let me help and help people and do what I do in chiropractic, but then also be available for my children and be available for our family whenever they did need me. And I found that within a micro practice, I have really been able to build this amazing balance between both of these things. So that's who I am, that's where I've come from, and that's where I come to you now. So now we're gonna dive into, oh, and sorry, there's a picture of my office. That's what my office looks like now. So this is my current micro practice. This is where I'm sitting right now. Um, I just saw patients this morning, and now I get to be on a webinar with you right now, and then I'm gonna see some patients this afternoon as well. So this is what my office looks like. It is a beautiful space. I have these gorgeous windows. We have a beautiful professional waiting room and I have other practitioners that I'm with, but the business that I am responsible for and the space I'm responsible for is what you see in front of you here. So how did I do this and what have I found and what do I think that you can learn from all of this? Well, I found what I'm calling my five secrets to running a low overhead, stress-free, high profit practice. Now we're gonna go through all of these different steps and we're gonna skim the surface on some of these ideas and concepts. But just know there is a lot more detail in this. There's a lot more that we can go into. And at this end of this webinar, what I'm gonna have for you is an opportunity to get a series of masterclass videos that I've created that go into some of these steps a little bit more in detail. So I just wanna let you know that that's available for you here at the end. And it's just a thank you for me to say, thanks again for taking the time to be on the webinar and 
and um, for just your excitement behind what I'm speaking about today. So we're going to get into the material and talk again about what all this means. But ultimately, the first thing I've noticed is to, to run this type of a practice is, number one, set it and forget it. Automate. There are so many things that we can automate in our practice, and we're going to talk about that shortly. Number two, talk about the money. I'm a cash-based practice. That means I need to talk to my patients about money. And we're going to talk about what that means and how that looks in the practice as well. Keeping the overhead bar low. As you see, saw in that picture, my overhead is the space that you see and just a couple of other things. It is the lowest I've ever had in my career. By running this kind of a practice, you get to just be the doctor, which is really exciting. And then number five, which almost should be number one, because I find it to be the most important, you really get to build your life and you get to build it the way that you want to. But listen, I just want to also reiterate, if you're on the webinar and you're in practice and you're loving the way that your practice is running and you love your staff and you love everything, by all means, I'm not telling you you have to change anything per se, but you will learn and you'll get tidbits out of this webinar that no matter where you are or what phase or status you are in practice, you're going to get something, you're going to walk away with something that I know you'll be able to use and implement into your practice. So let's get into it and let's start with the first one, which is my set it and forget it one. So I don't know if you're a kid of the 90s like I was or not. If you're not, that was like a super popular infomercial. And it was like these like rotisserie delicious chickens that you can make. And so when I thought about automation, I just thought, oh, my gosh, I have to get a clip from Ronco and add it to my webinar. So set it and forget it. It's all about making things automated, giving people training the way that you expect them to learn what you're doing. Because, again, my style of practice is very different than a lot of other chiropractors. So I let my patients know upfront and in advance what who I am. I'm a one woman show. I run a micro practice and here's what you can expect. But the first thing that I've noticed first and foremost in practice is being paperless. And regardless of what kind of practice you have, this is an absolute must. I mean, how amazing that we can now keep everything online, keep everything stored in our computers versus having to worry about these file cabinets that we used to have, or, oh my gosh, the storage rooms that we used to have. You know, even like five years ago, we would have to have office spaces that required storage, right? Because you have to keep the patient's files for five years, seven years, 10 years, whatever your state law requires of you. So now it's so amazing. And I highly recommend if you haven't already, get yourself an EHR because I am a cash-based practice and I don't have to worry about submitting, um, you know, the bills to insurance, I have a very basic low-level EHR system that costs me very little compared to some of the systems out there. But there are dozens, if not hundreds of systems that you can look into. So that is a big tip. Definitely go paperless if you haven't already. The next one I talk about is how to train your patients. Like I said, I explain to my patients upfront what to expect and how they can get a hold of me, how they can communicate with me because I don't have a staff member and how all of that works in this practice that we're in. So training my patients is, you know, better than how whoever trained this dog, right? This dog's just supposed to go sit down, right? This is not what we want our patients to do. We want our patients to do kind of what works best for the flow and for the efficiency of our practice. And so that's what I have done in my practice now is really let people know up front what to expect and just kind of how things run around here. Also, when I talk about setting and forgetting it and automating things, it's give the advice once, right? As chiropractors, how many times do you find yourself saying the same thing over and over again to multiple different people? I don't know about you, but I found myself doing that a lot in practice. And what I found is instead of doing something like this, where I'm just constantly telling people the exact same thing, I found a way to be able to produce it in this way. And it, it's one of the biggest tools that I use to do something like this is my website. Now, our websites are available, obviously, for um, information about us as the chiropractor, our office location, et cetera. But I also use my website to give a lot of resources that instead of constantly telling my patients stuff over and over again or emailing patients or texting patients information, 
what I constantly tell my patients is, you know what, go to my website. There's the resources tabs. You can go down on the resources and you can go find that functional medicine nutritionist that I recommend in the area or the massage therapists I love, et cetera, et cetera. And it's so easy and streamlined versus, again, having to stop, write something down or having to remember, oh, I've got to email them later about that. The other nice thing that I use my website for too, when it comes to training my patients, like we talked about earlier, is a lot of my patients will schedule themselves online through my website. So I'm not constantly having to schedule people after every time they come into the office to get adjusted. So those are the ways that I have implemented automation and setting things up in my office so then I just don't have to worry about it later. Now, next, we're going to talk about money, which for a lot of people is a little awkward sometimes, right? It's awkward to have to talk to people about money and, gosh, we have to do this exchange of goods and services and blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, as a micro practice, a one woman show and a cash based practice, the money talk all falls on me. So I say, talk about money but don't let them touch their wallets. And let me talk more about what that means. So first and foremost, before I talk about any money with my patients, we talk about goals because as the picture shows, I love goals and I love setting goals, but the goals that I set with my patients, first I talk to my patients about their clinical findings, right? During a report of findings, I talk about here's the clinical report of findings. Here is what the care plan is going to be or the treatment plan is going to be. Oh, now that we have this treatment plan, now here's what the financial plan is going to be. And this is what the money is that is going to be expected in the practice. Let me back up just one more step before that. As this kind of a practice, it is very, very important that we do an amazing day one and day two with patients. My day one is a very thorough consultation, examination, x-rays, scans, whatever that patient is needing. It's extremely thorough. My day two then is a very thorough clinical report of findings and then a detailed financial report of findings. All of these different parts are very important to then kind of keep this ship sailing and moving in a really nice, efficient, organized way. Some of these things, I can't get into all the details at this point in this webinar, but again, there's some more detail that will be shared in that masterclass that you can get access to later at the end of the webinar. So setting goals with what they expect, and then you can link that money financially to what their clinical outcomes are going to be. When I say don't let them touch their wallets, you need a payment source on file. Now, historically speaking, we have had some interesting ways that as chiropractors, we have kept people's credit cards on file. And I am guilty of this as well. I'm not sitting here saying that I've never kept somebody's credit card number, you know, fully on file. Um, I've seen offices that would um, make copies of the credit card numbers, right? So in case you don't know, that is highly unallowed anymore. Um, the credit card industry got together many years ago and put together these different rules and regulations that they expect of us as merchants. So whether we are um, a service industry, if we're a sales industry, whatever we are, if we are accepting a credit card, we have to abide by their rules. And one of their big rules are, is that the credit card number cannot be read back. It needs to be encrypted and stored securely on file. There are systems that I use in my practice to be able to do that because not only do I want to be able to access their credit card information when I need it, I want to make sure that I'm storing it in a legal and a secure way so that nothing is ever going to happen and nothing is going to be compromised as far as that information goes. So by keeping their payment source on file, what happens is we talk about the money part of the conversation up front. So new patient, um, Visit number one, report of findings, money talk. And then once the money talk is done and we establish how they are going to pay for their care, whether they're paying me monthly, if they're paying me uh, prepay or if they're paying per visit, whatever they choose, that then is all set up and then we don't have to worry about it again. So it's like your patients are walking in kind of like this gentleman is. They're walking in, they come in, they get an awesome adjustment. They're feeling great. And then when they're all done and ready to go, then they're just going to kind of mosey on out, 
and go on with the rest of their day. They're not needing to stop and get credit card and payment and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I love in my practice is that there's just this really nice even flow of patients coming in, patients coming out, patients seeing one another, and it just makes it a really fun, enjoyable place to be. Now, another important point about having this style of practice is keeping the overhead bar low. Now, this is something that we can um, absolutely talk about no matter what kind of practice you have. Because when I was in my Chicago practice, my overhead was close to $15,000 a month. And so to make that overhead, boy, I felt really stressed. I felt like a lot of pressure. But then when I got that overhead, I felt like, oh man, that I just felt like such a huge sense of accomplishment. So kind of like this video here playing. Okay, so this is an actual sport somewhere in Europe. And so here is a chiropractor trying to make their overhead. They're making it. And then when they jump it and they make it, look at this guy. Yes, I made my overhead, right? This is kind of what more the traditional model of chiropractic practice comes to find when it's an overhead. It's this large moat that we need to jump over and cross over to make it at the end of every month. And that includes not only our rent, but our equipment and our staff and our um, payroll and all those types of things. And so it can be really, really huge. So that was my experience back in the day. Um, here's another video though I'm going to play for you. And this shows what my overhead looks like right now. Okay, ready? Here we go. Don't don't miss it. Don't blink. Here's, here's, that's me right there. Yep. Done. Got it. My overhead today is the lowest it's ever been. In fact, for me to make my overhead every month, I have to adjust about 30 patients in a month. That's it. And I easily cover that. No problem. So then on top of that, everything else is my profit and everything else is what I'm able to invest in the business, bring home, et cetera. So it really is a wonderful feeling to have just this very low overhead. And so now how do I do that? How do I keep my overhead bar low? Well, first and foremost, I have minimal employees. My employees are zero. I am my own world's best boss because I don't have any employees. Not to say that CAs are bad, CAs are wonderful. I've had amazing CAs in my career. But I just found that where I was in my life and what I was doing in my life, I felt like I really just needed to do this on my own versus having to manage a staff. And that was something that I just was not interested in. So having minimal employees, especially if you're starting out or if you're a student or if you're moving into an, um, a practice after you've been an associate, this is a wonderful way to kind of take a small step into practice ownership Versus feeling like you have to make this like big, huge, gigantic leap like, you know, that guy did over that moat, right? So get minimal employees. And once you do build it up, if you want to get more employees, by all means, you can hire an employee. You can hire somebody at any time. You can hire virtual assistants to help you with things these days. So there are so many different options with technology and with so many cool features that we have, there's so many options that we can do things differently now. Get only the space that you need. That's my next way of keeping the overhead bar low. Boy, I have seen some gigantic spaces. And don't get me wrong, some of these spaces are amazing and beautiful and very well used. But when I would walk into some of those spaces, I always felt like, boy, this is too big boy, this is overwhelming. Oh my gosh. I really, I just can't see myself. And I just never felt like I was going to be somebody who's going to have like a mega, mega practice one day. And again, not to say that that's bad. It just wasn't something that I felt resonated with me personally. So when I first moved to town uh, about five years ago and I started looking for space, I ended up finding a chiropractor who um, rented a room to me. And so there you see, there I am standing there. There is my name on the door um, because he was the main chiropractor. And then I was the one that was also working there together with him. And then there is me in front of the door, my name on my actual office door. So that was my first, uh, the first one is a picture of my name on the front door and then on the actual, my room. And then that was my room. That was the initial room and space that I had. Um, now we moved from that space um, to this space that we're in um, maybe about seven months ago because there was just, you know, the lease was coming up, et cetera. But that, that initial room that I started with, 
boy, I think that was like a seven by 10 room. It was a pretty tiny room. Now the room that I have is a bit bigger. It's definitely much, much bigger. But my point is, is that you don't need a big space. You can totally start small scale and then just know and feel, um, you know, just feel at ease. You don't have all this pressure to have to like build and grow so, so super fast because you have to cover, you know, the space, you have to cover the overhead. I also keep my overhead really, really low because I have little to no marketing needs. My marketing budget is little to nothing. I mean, we just had this amazing holiday party that we did for our patients. I guess that was a marketing event, um, but I mean, that cost us, you know, not that much money at all. And we had a Santa come and we had this like fun party for the community and it was great exposure for the business for sure. But this is what the traditional marketing calendar looks like for a chiropractic office, right? Well, let's let's have a marketing meeting. We got to put the quarterly um, marketing calendar in place. And what are we going to do? And where are we going to set stuff up? And what are our goals? And, you know, that kind of a marketing plan not only is, you know, daunting to put together, but boy, that marketing plan for somebody individually is just like overwhelming to execute on their own, right? So that's where, again, I just started, you know, getting into the community little by little. Um, I did things that worked best for me and my style of practice. What is best for you? Um, maybe a different type of um, marketing or different way to get into get it, get out into the um, into the community. So ultimately, what used to be my marketing calendar like this is pretty much virtually like little to nothing right now. So keep your marketing needs very, very little because that'll help reduce your overhead as well significantly. The beauty of the practice that I have today, because it is by far the most fun I've had in practice in the 16 years that I've been a chiropractor, it is the most um, impact I've made in my career so far because I get to just be the doctor. Yes, of course, I have to handle all these other things and I have to do all these other things as far as like, you know, follow ups and um, credit card charges and things like that. But I mean, that takes me no time in my, you know, in my spare time outside of office hours. But I get to just, just, just be the doctor. I get to adjust um, adorable, cute little smiley babies like this one. And um, I get to really, really connect with my patients. And that is an amazing feeling. I get to connect with my patients not only on a chiropractic level, but a human level as well. We live in a town where um, it's not a huge town. The community all kind of knows one another and it's kind of cool. You know, I go to a soccer game with my kids on a, on a Saturday and I'll have a number of, you know, kids running up to me, Dr. Margie, Dr. Margie. And the, they're so excited to see me and they give me a hug. And, um, you know, there are times where my girls are at school and their friends will come up to them and they'll be like, oh, your mom is my chiropractor. And, you know, my girls have this sense of pride that like, oh, well, our mom is somebody that people know in the area. And um, I really love that feeling. I do. I love having this kind of community and something like this that I've built. Um, and it's been great because I've been able to build it on my own terms versus feeling like I was working, you know, against, you know, with something else or against something else that just really wasn't um, the best for me and our family. So I get to connect with people on just such another level, which I love. And because of that chiropractic connection with people, I'm able to retain my patients. Boy, I don't have a lot of patients that fall out of care. Um, I'm the type of practice that um, patients come to me because they know that I'm very good at handling cases that are um, maybe challenging for other chiropractors, um, maybe um, people who want long-term results, people who want more than just you know, the alleviation of back pain and neck pain, et cetera. I work with patients on all of their health and life goals and not just, oh, I was in a car accident. I, in fact, don't have any car accident cases um, because, you know, those aren't really cases that I, that I love, that I thrive in. These are the types of cases that I'm able to really help people on so many different deep levels. And so because of all those things, the connections, the retentions, the referrals in my practice really just kind of naturally and really organically come out. You know, I, I'm, at, I'm out and about at events and I'll always see patients and I always tell patients up front, listen, if you see me out and about, just know that it's up to you to tell people that I'm your chiropractor, you know, because of HIPAA, I can't, you know, announce to people or be like, hey, how was your adjustment, right? So, um, you know, this is what happens a lot. My 
patients will be out and about and we're hanging out socially and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is my chiropractor. Hey, meet my friends. Hey, you guys should go see her. And, you know, just kind of how it naturally all kind of progresses. And that's how my practice is kind of built, you know, slowly over time. So it's been really, really amazing. But the final, one of the final things that we'll talk about is how I have been really able to build this micro practice really in the center of how everything else has fallen perfectly into place. So whether it's my practice, it's my, the social life I have, my family life, et cetera, I've really been able to build everything and find time for everything and really do well at all of these things. You know, there's that saying where, um, you know, if you do so much stuff, you feel like you're not mastering anything. I don't feel that way in my life at all. I have felt that way previously, but right now I do feel like, boy, I'm doing, I'm doing a pretty good job at all these things at my practice, at my family, at my own, you know, personal social life, the things I want to do, you know, I'm really feeling quite fulfilled in, in all of these areas. So how have I been able to do this? And again, this is another one of these facets that whether you want to build a micro practice or not, you can implement these things no matter what kind of practice or life you have. So how do I build my life? Well, I block off a lot of my scheduling, right? So this is a week in the life of Dr. Margie Smith. And this happened to actually be Easter week. So you'll see Sunday obviously is blocked off. Monday, I just didn't see any patients because I always take Easter Monday off. Um, but then you'll see the green, um, the, the entries that are green, those are patients that I see. And then all the rest of the blocked off, um, blocked off time is either time that I'm spending with my family, my children, um, at school volunteering. Um, you can see there are times where I'm exercising and working out because I love doing that. Um, I'm having lunch with friends because I love doing that. I'm having a date night with my husband because I love doing that, right? So I'm able to really have a nice mix and flow of all these different things. If you kind of add up the hours that I'm in the office seeing patients, that schedule there is, you know, it's, it's right around like eight or nine hours that I was in that week, which is awesome. Now, again, I'm in the office seeing and doing some paperwork and doing some other stuff, or I'm doing that at home. But yeah, I'm in the office, yeah, around like 10 hours a week seeing patients. And it's just been an amazing, you know, balance for me and my own life. If you want to do more in your life and your practice, by all means, you can. And with this type of a model, it will really give you the flexibility to do as little or as much as you want to build onto it. And if one day, you know what, you're in your micro practice and you're thinking, boy, I'm ready to be on my own and I'm ready to get my own office space and I want to get, you know, my, my name on the door, et cetera. Great. Then you could just unplug your micro practice out of wherever, whatever space you're in and then move into a different space. You'll already have this really nice established patient base that you already have to work with. You know, I have other um, chiropractors that I've worked with who have their micro practice in gyms in like, you know, fitness facilities. So there are so many different options as to where, your space can get built out of. It doesn't necessarily have to be in another chiropractor's office. That's just what has worked out really well for me. Another way that I have built my life is I match my market to my schedule. So you saw my schedule. So there's my schedule. This is what I have available. My early, early mornings, my late, late evenings, those are just not ever going to be available because I want to be with my children in the mornings. I want to be with my children in the evenings before bed most nights. So those types of hours um, that certain industries, certain people carry, those are just not going to be ideal patients for me. So my market is more the professional who has maybe flexibility in their time in their day because they work from home. And so they can come in at a 10 o'clock or maybe the stay at home mom who drops the kids off, goes and exercises and then is able to come into, into the office. But maybe like a construction worker who is working at like 6 a.m., and wants to get adjusted, you know, I might not have the right availability for them. So that's another important thing, regardless of what kind of practice you, you have, is really figure out who is your ideal patient? Who do you love working with the most? And then once you kind of define who that is, figure out what are the best times for them to come in to see you in your practice. And ultimately, it's okay to not accept every patient in the office too, because it is 
so rewarding to work with the patients that you love to work with, but what about the patients that are not so fun to work with, right? So build something that works for you and works for who you want to work with, and those people will come because that's just kind of how life works. That's how the universe works, I believe. And I really feel like if you build what is best for you and what you're going to flourish in, people are attracted to energy. And so if you're energetic and if you're excited in your office, because this is your dream office, then you're just going to keep getting people flooding into your office who love that and resonate with that versus you being in an office and you working with patients that you're kind of like, well, I'm not really that excited about being with them. Right. And ultimately it comes down to saying no to some people and, but in a nice, obviously a very nice professional way. I have plenty of patients that I truly have gotten to the report of findings with them. And I've just said, and looked at them and said, listen, I don't think that I'm the right person for you. Not to say that I don't want to work with you, but my expertise is not what I think that you need for your goals that you're wanting to do. However, I do know some other amazing chiropractors here locally that I'd like to refer you to because I think they're going to be a great fit for you, right? I've done that in my career plenty of times, but there are also a handful of times where I will not accept a patient because you know, they want other office hours or they want to be able to drop in. And I don't have the bandwidth to be able to accept walk-ins and drop-ins right now. My office is a by appointment only kind of a deal. And patients know that if you show up late or if you're, um, you know, early, you may not be able to be seen early because they see how I work and they see how I see patients. So it's okay. It's okay. And like Nancy Reagan is telling you here, you know, you could just say, no, it's going to be okay. So that's it. Those are the five secrets, whether we are talking about automating and setting and forgetting things in your practice, um, discussing money with your patients, no matter how awkward it may make you feel, keep that overhead bar low. Um, and it's really going to let you just be the doctor in practice and really help you help people the way that we always wanted to, because that's not why we became chiropractors, right? We became chiropractors because we wanted to help people. So this model, I feel like, is the ideal way to be able to do that in practice today. And it's going to help build your life and it's going to help you have this beautiful work-life balance. Because we hear too many times of even the chiropractors who worked and worked and worked and just worked it to the bone and had a heart attack or had a stroke or had something happen to them. And I'll be honest, I don't want to be that statistic. Oh, I almost lost my headphones. I don't want to be that statistic. I want to be a happy, healthy example to my patients and to my family versus feeling like, oh gosh, I just have to work it so hard and it's all about the money, right? So at this point, a lot of pe people will ask sometimes about, well, what does this mean and how can you help me have this kind of a practice or learn more about some of these practice concepts? Well, what we've created and put together is something called the micro practice. It is an online course that is an eight week module. That online course goes into detail even more than the masterclass that you guys will have access to as well. There is a private Facebook group. There are some coaching calls. There are in-person events in the future, some interviews that we're doing and getting all of your questions and answer, um, all of your questions answered, you know, as best as we can to ultimately help support you. I became a chiropractor because obviously I love helping people and I love helping people chiropractically. What I found in my career though, is that boy, I really do love helping chiropractors as well. And I love helping and figuring out some of the business challenges and how we can help work on those goals together and help achieve even better, you know, better health in your own business, not just only in, with patients as well. So these are just a couple of chiropractors that I've worked with in the past that have said some really amazing, sweet things about me um, and um, and some endorsements as far as, um, you know, having this kind of a practice and how a micro practice is the way to go and how um, 
Dr. Kat sees me and she sees how I build my life around my family and children come first, which is, you know, again, just an amazing um, feeling. Same thing from Dr. Stephanie. Um, even though a micro practice is small on overhead, it's big on impact. And that's really what we want, again, to do in our lives. And then Dr. Randall also talking about how um, bigger is not always better. And it's, it's such a nice idea now to make things start small and simple and then grow and build on top of there. So here's the offer. Um, if you go to the micropractice.com, then you could register for the masterclass. Um, and it's just filling out a couple of quick um, questions and a couple of quick information. And then we'll send you an email with a link to those videos um, so that you can view those on your own time. Again, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my family's heart um, for taking the time to be here today. Um, it really has been a pleasure and an honor. And I just can't thank Christy enough, who is just one of my dearest friends. Um, and I really appreciate, again, the time and the energy, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Margie. Well, we are so excited that we were able to schedule this webinar, y'all. And there are a ton of questions for you. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Um, the first one is, how many patients do you see a week? Oh, that's a great question. I am seeing, I'd say probably on average, I see about probably 35 patients a week. And I say that because there are some weeks where I'm in the office every single day and I'm here Monday through Friday and I'm able to see quite a few patients in the time. But now when I'm in my office, I am only here seeing patients probably about three hours at a time. So if I come in on a Monday, I'm coming in Monday morning and for three hours and I'm not coming back because my kids come home from school and I want to pick them up and I want to hang out with them. So I'm not coming back. I could, but I don't really want to. Um, and then Tuesdays, I'm usually here in the afternoon, same thing with Thursdays. So I'd say on average, I'm seeing about 35 patients a week. Um, I do have quite a few times where I travel. Um, we're leaving town on Friday. We're gonna be gone until Wednesday next week. Um, I see my family in Chicago, as Christy mentioned a lot. Um, so then those weeks, like this week, for example, I think I'll be seeing maybe about 25 people um, I have scheduled right now. So again, that's about on average what I'm seeing a week. Okay. On the no staffing front, with so many people ready to scream all the isms, um, how do you handle seeing patients alone? So, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that I do as far as seeing people alone. Um, first off, I never feel alone in the office, which is wonderful because where I'm working, I'm renting a room from another chiropractor. She also rents space to two other practitioners. And then she also employs two massage therapists. So I'm always feeling like somebody is here. Um, even though I'm in this room and it's closed off, um, you can see there's my door right there. If I open that door, there is a nice little warm, cozy waiting room area. So I typically have my patients, you know, the doors open, I'm adjusting somebody, my table's right back there. Um, I'm adjusting somebody. And so my next patient knows they're sitting there and they're waiting. Oh, well, when she's open and free, then it's my turn and I'll, I'll kind of come in. So when patients are coming in just on a regular basis with adjustments, all I'm doing is adjusting. I'm, I, I'm adjusting and then maybe taking another minute or two to schedule them but only if I haven't already scheduled them in advance. Typically I'm scheduling patients for weeks in advance just to say like, hey, let's just get the times that work on your schedule, my schedule. And, you know, so it's not a lot of time that I'm having to spend. So hope that answers. There's lots of other things that I do as far as how I see patients, but that's mainly how I see people. Um, I knew this question was gonna come up. Um, as a cash practice, what do you think a fair fee is considering with just one room, the number of patients you see in a day with only 10 hours a week and your overhead is very low? That doesn't matter. What matters I is see. that you went to chiropractic college. You are an expert in what you do. What you charge should not have any impact on what your overhead is just because you're as a uh, savvy um, business person and have decided to keep your overhead bar low doesn't mean that now you need to charge less. 
because then that makes it seem like, well, you know, does she really know what she's doing? So I, for example, where I live, um, I think I'm extremely reasonable. I charge $45 cash for an adjustment. I charge $95 for an adult new patient visit and $75 for an adult or for a pediatric um, new patient visit. And whether you're an adult or a kid, it's $45 per adjustment. That's it. You make my heart sing. And I will say that I did send Dr. P a message that said, um, whether you're a cash practice or not, it's all about fair market value. Your overhead only plays into that when you're, you need to be charging at least your overhead to break even. Totally. We have seen people who are charging less and then don't understand why they're not financially successful. Right. Um, fair market value just means that your profitability is up. You're making more money. Right. But that doesn't mean you should be charging less because you're a savvy business owner. So, you know, a great indicator of that. I mean, easy for any area. Like, what does Medicare reimburse for a 9941 in your area? In my area, Medicare re reimburses like $36, right? So, you know, I mean, I know that the people who are accepting insurance and I do have a couple of Medicare patients. I am in Medicare, but I have like two patients, three, I think, who are in Medicare right now. Right. So with that, I you know that those those doctors are charging more because that's how you play the game and all that kind of stuff. So my cash fee of forty five dollars, nobody has ever barked at. Nobody has ever had any issue with. Um, so I find it to be based on, again, who you are and what you're doing versus what your overhead is. That shouldn't be a factor. And there are several websites out there to help you kind of like um, narrow down, like what is that fair market value for your area? Because it's considerably different um, in parts of California. It's very diverse well, in totally. California. Totally very diverse in New York, um, even here in Mississippi, because um, we have some pretty rural areas that would be considerably less market wise than they would be just outside of the capital, which is where we are. Um, so one person asked, well, how do you see Medicare patients? She just told you she's in network with Medicare. <laughs> I'm in network with Medicare. So yes, um, because that's what my area requires of me, that I have to be in network and accept assignment. So yes, that is the one place that I see um, insurance or that I get ex get insurance checks, um, but it's all the same. Nobody's getting different fee schedules, nothing like that. I'm not discounting Medicare patients. You know, everything is very clean. Very clean. Yes. So if you um, want to see Medicare patients, because he said, well, do you just charge them cash? The answer would be a big fat N-O. No. no. Um, you must be in network with Medicare to touch Medicare patients. You cannot, you and on that part, that doesn't matter, but you have to be registered with a Medicare number, right? To to Medicare to put your hands on the largest growing population in America, ladies and gentlemen. And when it comes down to it, I've had chiropractors tell me, like, oh, we just have them sign a form to opt out of their Medicare. And I said, you know what? I'm not willing to risk this on some piece of paper that potentially, most likely, is not going to hold up. And my license is gone. My livelihood is gone. My life, you know, everything is going to be gone because, oh, I'm going to have them sign this paper. No, I'll participate. I'll opt in because I want to see those patients. Sure. I have a large retirement community um, or retired population that lives in this town. I don't want to say no to them. I love that. I love Medicare patients. They're my favorite. Me too. Also, Medicare pays really fast. They may not pay a lot, but they pay fast. I think they're paying, I, I think reimbursement wise, I think they do pretty well. I mean, like I, I said, in our area, you, I think it's pretty well. People are saying, I'm like, oh, I don't see Medicare patients. They don't pay enough. Well, and also for non-covered services like the new patient visit, Medicare patients honestly are the least likely to give you any kind of pushback on price. They like quality care and they are all about some chiropractic. Just my yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, what system do you use for secure credit card charges? I use cash practice. Obviously, I was an employee of theirs. I worked for them um, for many, many years. But yes, that's what I use. Cash practice is um, not only, I mean, there's a lot of systems that you could use. But if you want a system that is going to know your business as a chiropractic office, then go to cash practice because they are the best of the best. They're fantastic. They sure are. I mean, Top notch, 
they have the best customer service too. And I'm not just saying that because I love everybody who works there. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. Or that I acquired half of them as my very good friends. <laughs> Maybe but they, they are too. No, they but... are phenomenal. Um, will this presentation be available later today? You know it will because I record everything yeah. and it'll be on the archives. And um, everybody who registered is going to get a link to it in an hour. Um, so they can go back and watch it. And you should because it's awesome. Share it with a friend. Thank you. Um, because that I mentioned, aren't you kind of awesome? Um, so you. if you have sure. additional questions for the beautiful Dr. March Smith, you can email them to me and I will forward them to her because I'm super excited because I'm on the three weeks and counting. Three weeks, two days until I get to spend a couple of days. <laughs> I didn't realize there was that big of a countdown, but yes, yes. And if you are at Parker Vegas, if you do happen to go, um, come and find us. Come find us and chat us up and um, whatever questions or whatever support I can offer, I'm your girl. She's going to be hanging out on aisle 600 because all of her friends are, we're all sitting together. So Perfect. Perfect. All the um, cool kids. <laughs> all the cool kids are on the same run. Oh, you're the best. So come hang out on aisle 600 on a break. Ask Dr. Margie about what it's like to be in a micro practice. Obviously, it is glorious. She doesn't look stressed out. She looks happy. She's excited. Oh, Y'all saw her schedule. Sure it's awesome. <laughs> it's a pretty, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I love my life. But, I, you know, again, I built it. It's not like this just fell in my lap. And you can do the same. So. Check it out. Make sure you go and fill out the questionnaire and find out more about the masterclass. And just as a reminder, our next webinar will be in two weeks. I'm going to miss y'all next week a whole, whole bunch. But, you know, they always schedule those annual meetings. And they have to be on a Tuesday and they take up my entire day. And so I refuse to do a recorded webinar because I like to connect with you guys live and in person. So I will miss y'all next week. But the following week, we're going to have Dr. Tom Nathila. He's our resident expert on planning for retirement and selling your practice. So learn how to build a micro practice with Dr. Marjorie. You're going to build it, have this amazing life. Then you're going to turn out and sell it to somebody else so you can keep on living that amazing life. Perfect. So, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and a fabulous week. Don't forget to come find us in Parker. Oh, how do we find out about the masterclass? Here, it is on the announcement, on the offers. If you will look on your little right-hand side of your screen, there is a menu. There's one that looks like a megaphone. If you click on that, it says click here to submit your application for the micro practice masterclass. So just click that button. Copy link. One more. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Okay, guys, so check that out. If, again, have any more questions, just let me know. You'll get your link to the recording here in about an hour. And I will see you guys in two weeks, maybe three weeks and two days in Parker, Vegas. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.